Hey there YouTubers, thanks for watching. Today we're going to go on a little bit more about errors. We're going to take a simple macro that no matter what cell you select, it will take the row number, for example 11 or row 4 or even row 2. It'll take the A column of 2 and B and add it up and plop it into C of that selected row. So we'll get started in a fresh module here. And we'll call this A plus B. You can call it anything you want. All right, getting started, we're going to get the selected row. So selection.row is what we're looking for. And let's give that a name. We'll call it cell R for selection selected row. And once we have that variable, I'm going to control C to copy that. Now that we have that, we can say the range of C. Notice I'm putting an end quote, and I'm using an ampersand to join that with our variable. Cell R, end parentheses, range of C, and in this case it would be call, or row 2. C2 is our range. Equals, in fact I'll copy and paste that, and just change the letters equals the range of A2 plus B2. But now we're going to go over the error part of that. If I hit F5, it'll sure enough it'll do that. And let's take another selected row. See, there's nothing in there. So when I run it, it'll give the value of 0 there. Interesting. So, um, let's take my example was going to be what if there was text. Even a number that's considered text sometimes can throw it out. So let's put a word. 5 plus Dan is definitely going to give an error, but we'll learn how to work through that. So here we go. I'm going to hit F8. F8 selection.row is fine. That's going to be row 2. Um, and we're going to take C equals A2 plus B2. But we know that B2 has a word, a string plus a number will not work. Here comes the error. Okay, type mismatch, runtime error 13. If I hit debug, here's what we can do. In the last video, we learned that we can do on error, go ahead and resume next. On error resume, oops, you gotta spell it right, I guess. On error resume next, that means that when you reach an error, Excel, I want you to keep on trucking. Just keep on, resume, go on about your business as you were, all that. So we're going to do that, but then we're going to catch an error after the fact, if there ever is one. So here we go. If error, oops, if error, err dot number, and then you can trap it. I think if the error is zero, then perhaps there's uh, no errors. Let me check. Okay, well, well let's check together. Debug dot print. I have the immediate window open. You can get there by clicking Control G for the immediate window. Now I've typed debug dot print, and if I hit a space, I'll tell Excel what I want to debug, what I want to learn about. What I want to learn right now is what err dot number currently is. Currently, probably, oops. Well, let's see. Hmm. Okay, it's mad at us because we haven't completed our sentence. Let's put end if, and we'll put uh, then. That ought to make it a little less angry with us. Now we can debug.print. Debug.print, that means print out right here what the error number is currently. So I hit enter, and it says currently the error number is zero. So if the error number is zero, then we know there are no errors yet. But watch what happens. We've got on error resume next. Uh, now we're again, we're back to the point where normally I would bring an error, but it's just gonna keep on trucking. I hit F8. Now, we know that error.number now has a value. Let's see what it is. We're going to debug.print error, err.number, hit enter. Oh, runtime error 13. That's our error number, but that's irrelevant right now. What we can say is if error, err.number is not zero, then 
make a note to myself, then we have an error on our hands. Ooh, okay. So if error number is not zero, we want it to always be zero, but if it isn't, there was an error. We'll do a message box. So hit F8, and we'll say there was an error, and we'll say go to ND, or just let's just do exit sub. That'll just close down the macro completely from right there, dead in its tracks. So there was an error, and F8 exit sub that just closes it down. So, so, but if there was not an error, then obviously it'll keep on going right here, and we'll have a message box that says no errors. And why do we know that there was no errors? Because the the sub did not the procedure did not exit when there was an error. So we'll have a little victory message that said there was no errors. So let's do that. Let's have a little fun now. We've gotten this far. We're going to have whatever this is plus whatever this is equals that. So let's have a little fun. Uh, let's see. 1 and 345 and 2 and 89.4 all right, so I'm going to click here, and I'm going to hit Alt F8 and run my macro. A plus B. Double click here. No errors. Okay, hey, it added it. No errors. Alt F8. A plus B. No errors. Great. How about this one? Alt F8. A plus B. No errors. Great. It added it. How about this one right here? We know what it's going to say, don't we? Alt F8. A plus B on the selected row. A plus B. There was an error. You notice it did not finish the last step. No, I mean, it didn't add anything. Okay. So, but if we change that to a number, then it will work. There's a lot of different things you can do, guys. You don't have to do a bunch of message boxes and drive your drive your coworkers nuts. I'm just saying. You could... Uh, could have it do anything you want but that's how you can trap that error number in fact you could have a specific one for each type of error you could say um, if error dot number is 13 then and you could say you know I don't know what error 13 is uh, I guess you could say use only numbers if it's a runtime error 13 and then you could have a different message you could say else if error dot number equals 1004 I think 1004 I may be wrong I think 1004 is like for VLOOKUPs and things that go bad then you could have a separate message box then blah 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 and if anyway there's a lot you can do but just remember you could say if error err dot number is or isn't something is not zero then you can trap it um, other thing we went over today is if you want to trap the selected row number or column number you just take selection dot row or selection dot column and trap it into a variable so that you can reuse it over and over c and row four c a and row four so that's how that works and we also talked about on error resume next that's how you get to this point because typically if an error ha happens here it's going to give you a message that says there's an error blah 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 but with this, it will continue on, and, and possibly the error number will be trapped by you if you use that creatively. So that's how to use error, or excuse me, err.number, and trap those errors. Thanks for watching. Catch you next.